Welcome to the Markup Matchup, aka the Semantic Showdown, where we compare Vue, Angular, Svelte, Quick, React, and Solid, but not their code. We're comparing the quality of the HTML examples in their documentation sites. Wait, what? That's right. What are some lessons we can learn from looking at the HTML in the examples in the various documentation sites of different JavaScript frameworks? This is important because developers copy and paste from what they see in the documentation. Maybe you do. Certainly new devs do. Also, frameworks should promote good practices. Library and framework documentation sites are often where devs learn practices they will continue to use throughout their careers. It's also important for developer and user experience. If devs write good semantic HTML, components are much more maintainable. Good markup helps other devs on your team to understand what's going on in the templates of your components and helps yourself in the future when you come back to a component months or years later. And of course, good quality markup is much more accessible automatically. As devs, we need to remember that we're not just trying to match visually some prototype that someone's drawn, but providing a way for humans to consume the information, to consume the app or site in various ways. We want it to be accessible. So using the HTML specification as our guide, let's take a look at a few examples inside the documentation sites of these various frameworks and libraries. And we'll rate them to see who wins the markup matchup the semantic showdown. First, React. The React documentation site has a lot of good examples from a semantic markup standpoint. For example, here when talking about reacting to input with state, we see the component returns a fragment. That means we're not unnecessarily adding to the depth of the DOM, adding a div, for example, just to have a parent container to return in the JSX, and unnecessarily causing the DOM to get deeper which in the long run can negatively affect performance. Here we also see good semantic use of headers, paragraph tags instead of just spans or divs, and form elements, as well as paragraph tags for errors. This is a good example of not defaulting to spans and divs. The HTML specification says that the P element represents a paragraph. And a paragraph is basically a collection or run of phrasing content, which could be links, buttons, form inputs, images, and a lot more. Whereas a div element, according to the specification, is an element of last resort that really means nothing. If you just used divs and spans, then your HTML document is the equivalent of a text file with no markup. But not everything is perfect in the React doc site. They do fall prey to the div is a container falsehood. In HTML, there are a lot of grouping and sectioning elements that can serve as containers. Div should be the last element that you reach for when you need a container. For example, here, where it's welcome to my website, under writing markup with JSX, I could replace this div, this outer div, with main, which means the primary contents of the page. There's a paragraph here, and that's fine, but this div is welcome to my website with a header so it would make sense to use the header element. And notice everything still works just fine. And if I was to come back into this component later, it's much faster and easier to read because I'm using semantic elements. I can see what the content is at a glance. The React Dev Docs aren't too bad when it comes to markup quality, but they still fall prey to div as the only container sometimes. On a grading scale of A, B, C, D, F, I give the React docs a B. Let's look at the documentation for Vue. There are some nice things to be found in Vue's documentation markup wise. Here we have a bunch of buttons in a list. And if I empty the list, I get a message. And instead of being a span or a div, it's a paragraph tag. Good. But not all as well. Here I'm incrementing a counter. And this, the basic doc site example, has the count text completely not marked up. There's a wrapping div for the app, which probably should be main or at least an article or section. Again, div is not the only container. But what's worse is that count itself has no markup whatsoever. This is the equivalent of a text file at this point. Vue does have the occasional good markup, but they fall prey a lot to divs and lack of markup and spans. 
Instead, I could have done something like this. This is main. And then wrap the count in a paragraph tag. Now, of course, this is no longer inline, but that's not a big deal. I can take care of that with CSS. Here's another example of a span that only exists for a CSS class to be added to it. There are a couple of problems there, though. From an accessibility standpoint, you're not actually saying in the contents of the markup what the meaning of this visual is. The visual is striking through, marking off this text is done, but it's not actually contained in the metadata of the markup. Funny enough, there's actually an HTML element called the DEL element, which represents something being removed from a document. And the actual example that they show inside the HTML specification itself is a to-do list, where we're deleting a to-do that's done by wrapping it in a DEL. In this way, the meaning that is being transferred by the CSS in the view example is also in the metadata of the markup and thus more accessible and easier for a dev to read without actually having to run the app. View does try, but they miss the mark in a lot of these cases. So view stock sites from me, get a C. What about Angular? Angular has some good examples. For example, in their primary tutorial, they have a template wrapping a section and then an image, an H2, and a paragraph tag for the content. This is the kind of markup you want to see. Divs and spans are the last resort. On the flip side, it does occasionally have things like this, a list of items in a cart that appear this way, but are just marked up as divs and spans, meaning they really aren't marked up at all. Again, this is just equivalent to a text file with no markup. Instead, this could have been, for example, an unordered list. Or if you really wanted each item to be its own card, it could have been something like an article. And then each of the pieces of information, a paragraph tag, which could then be dealt with visually using CSS. Angular does a little bit of a better job than Vue, especially because they do have some samples which are really well marked up. So I give Angular's docs site markup a B minus. What about Svelte? I have to say Svelte does a great job. You rarely see unnecessary divs and spans. At worst, they fall back to paragraph tags. For example, here with a button count and these two runs of text are Ps and there's no unnecessary wrappers of any kind. It's not 100% perfect. There are, of course, tweaks that could be done. For example, here when teaching about each, they have a small to-dos app and each text box and checkbox that are really related to each other are wrapped in a div whose only purpose is to add a CSS class, which changes the opacity when clicked. But again, there's nothing that says that these two inputs are related within the markup itself. The appropriate element to say that any sets of fields are related is a field set. Now that does have some default styling with it, but again, that's very easy to fix with a bit of CSS and works just fine. And now is also easier to understand when you look at the markup later on down the road. Svelte on the whole though, does an excellent job. I give Svelte's doc site example markup in A minus. What about SolidJS? SolidJS's tutorial starts off strong. Instead of returning a div, it returns an H1 header from the component. This is often an issue with component-based frameworks and libraries. They tend to need to return a single parent element. And so div is often used unnecessarily increasing the depth of the DOM, but you can use fragments. And a lot of times div doesn't need to be the parent container. In this example, it's just an H1. Unfortunately, solid stock sites tend to take a dive in terms of markup quality the more they get into explaining how solid works. This isn't uncommon with documentation where the quality of the markup and examples go by the wayside, the deeper the docs get into technical JavaScript. Here under the guide for components, we have a component that returns a div sitting inside a div. This value, this block of text is completely not marked up. And I would say I saw this the most in solids documentation. Now this video isn't about which framework or library do I recommend. 
This is simply about quality of their markup. And while I have a lot of respect for the content that the folks working on Solid put out and what they're working to accomplish, I have to give Solid's documentation example markup a C minus. What about Quick, which at the time of this video just released to 1.0? Well, ethically, I can't really rate it because I went ahead and as Quick was preparing for a 1.0 release, I went through the entire documentation site, the tutorials, and as the documentation is open source and I had already had some experience with Quick, I went ahead and updated all their example markup to be more semantic. Now, I probably missed some things here and there. I'll be taking another look. But just as an example, the initial basic component in the tutorial now returns a paragraph instead of a div. It's actually marked up. And the markup that we're moving to has only semantic content. Now, that doesn't mean there's not divs anywhere. Sometimes div is appropriate but only if it's the last resort, nothing else is appropriate. So again, I'm not going to rate my own work, but the goal is to be an A. By the way, I'll put a link in the description of the video to my merge request. So you can actually see all the places in Quick's documentation where I updated the markup in the examples. From divs and spans, which is understandable as a lot of work was being put into the content of the docs and the explanations, and I was happy to help update the markup itself to be semantically appropriate to each example. At least that was the effort. So how did the markup match up, the semantic showdown end up? Well, here's the results. Svelte came out on top with an A minus. I couldn't really rate quick because I worked on it, but we're going to say with a footnote that the goal is for it to be an A. I, I hope it is. You can see my own work in quick stock site. And of course, there may be spots that I missed, and I'll keep doing small updates and merge requests as time goes on. React came in with a B, Angular a B minus, Vue a C, and Solid in last place with a C minus. The broader point here being, as a dev, you may be tempted to just copy paste example code from documentation sites, but I encourage you to think like an HTML author to mark up your content to be familiar with the HTML specification. I've actually been working on a project to help focus in on the markup quality in UI. On my site, you can find examples I call HTML recipes of good semantic markup for common UI designs. And inside each example, there is an explanation, sample markup, and links to the HTML specification for relevant elements. The idea is for you, the dev, to author your markup to think about the elements that should be marking up the content of your site or app. And I encourage framework and library authors, as well as any of you who want to contribute to a documentation site if it's open source, to take as much care with the quality and accessibility of the markup as you do with the JavaScript. Both developers and users will benefit. Thanks for listening. Happy coding.